I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge Collapse The city of Minneapolis is the largest and most populous city in the state of Minnesota. Along with the state capital, St. Paul, it makes the popular metropolitan area known as the Twin Cities. Lying on both banks of the Mississippi River, Minneapolis has a plethora of bridges that carry a couple of hundreds of thousands of vehicles every day. One of them was the notorious I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge. The collapse of this bridge in 2007 revealed how terrible the state of traffic infrastructure in the United States was. The collapse of the I-35 West Bridge in Minneapolis was a shocking surprise for the inhabitants of the city. For 40 years, the bridge, officially known as Bridge 9340, served all those who traveled from the western part of the city to downtown. On August 1, 2007, the bridge's central span fell into the river, taking along 13 innocent lives and injuring 145 people. This was by far the worst accident in the history of Minnesota. It mobilized the entire state in rescuing the survivors, but also raised the question of how on earth a bridge could collapse on its own. The I-35 West Bridge was built in the mid-1960s, but its expiration date was still decades away. Nevertheless, the accident and the question of what led to it caught the nation's attention, as there were thousands of bridges of the same construction across the entire United States. On the site of the I-35 West Bridge, Today stands a modern concrete structure, the St. Anthony Falls Bridge. The old bridge was a steel bridge. Three center spans over the river were truss arch constructions. Eleven approach spans were carried by steel girders, and another three approach spans were concrete slab constructions. In all, it was a massive construction that carried eight lanes of the Interstate 35 West Highway. The daily average of vehicles crossing the bridge was 140,000. To compare to New York City's George Washington Bridge, the busiest bridge in the United States, has traffic of one quarter of a million vehicles per day and was built in 1931, 36 years before the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge. August 1, 2007 event showed that the bridge was not as sturdy as many Minneapolitans thought it was. The collapse of the bridge on its own was something they didn't expect. It was Wednesday, a typical working day in Minneapolis. At 6 p.m., during rush hour, the bridge was swarming with vehicles. Drivers were moving slowly across the bridge because the number of lanes was reduced due to scheduled resurfacing works. Suddenly, the bridge started to tremble. Almost all of the survivors claimed they thought the earthquake was going on. To their misfortune, it was the arch construction that began to collapse. The central portion of the main span detached from the rest of the bridge and began to fall. With the central arch gone, the entire truss arch structure collapsed. The adjacent spans, too, cave in. At that moment, there were 111 vehicles on the part of the bridge that collapsed. It was a surreal scene. Vehicles were flying down and bounced off the bridge wreckage. Most of the vehicles remained on the surface, but some slid into the water. At one end of the collapsed central span, a semi-trailer truck was caught by fire. It was next to the school bus full of children returning from a school trip. If it weren't for a guardrail, the bus would have surely dropped into the river. Luckily, one of the school staff members was cool-headed enough to break the emergency door and lead the kids to safety. In just a few seconds, one of the iconic bridges of Minneapolis turned into a heap of steel and concrete on top of which vehicles were scattered all over the place. The dust settled quickly and people started leaving their cars. They rushed to help those who were injured and trapped in their vehicles. A woman whose car fell in the water managed to get out through the driver's side window and swam her way to safety. A colossal accident such as a bridge collapse in the middle of the city raised an immediate alarm. Ambulance crews, firefighters, and police officers from all over Twin City rushed to the scene. The reaction was swift indeed, largely thanks to the great help they received from bystanders. In the first wave only, around 100 people were transported to hospitals for treatment. Some of the victims had life-threatening injuries, but most were relieved home after being treated. 20 of the injured even managed to reach hospitals independently. 
A significant number of volunteers and nonprofit organization members arrived at the scene in the following days to help the wounded, and the responders engaged in rescuing and evacuating the victims. Considering the fact that the central arch fell from the height of 115 feet, the number of casualties was surprisingly low. The majority were treated in the first few hours of the rescue and evacuation operation. Those whose cars ended up in the river or were trapped under the ruins were either rescued or found in the following days. Saving those people was a complex operation because the Mississippi River had strong currents and was too murky. Mayor of Minneapolis, Raymond Thomas Ryback Jr., declared a state of emergency and called in the armed forces for assistance. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was engaged in lowering the level of the river by two feet. Their effort was a great help to U.S. Navy divers who came to look for the victims trapped under the water. Since 9-11, cities across the United States have invested a lot of time and money in building an effective quick response system to deal with large-scale incidents. In the case of the I-35 West Bridge collapse, the Minneapolis system proved to be as effective as it could be, but unfortunately, the final toll of the accident was 145 injured and 13 dead whose lives simply couldn't be saved. Even before the rescue and recovery operation was finished, the authorities ordered a full investigation of the accident. The bridge, even though 40 years old, was not supposed to collapse on its own. However, this was exactly what happened, and the cause had to be found. In the 1960s, steel arch bridges were common structures. The I-35 West Bridge was built by the standards of the American Association of State Highway Officials. Construction of the Minneapolis Bridge began in 1964 and lasted for three years before it opened for traffic in 1967. The main, central arch of the bridge was a 456-foot steel arched truss. It had two shorter arches 304 feet in length on both sides that connected it with approach spans. The central arch was supported by four pylons built on two support piers located on opposite riverbanks. One thing that the bridge lacked was redundant supports. This meant that if one support of the structure failed, there was no redundant support to take the load. On the other hand, bridge designers never envisioned such a scenario where any part of the bridge would cave in. Still, the bridge collapsed, meaning there was a design flaw that no one was aware of for 40 years. When the investigators started looking through papers, they found out that one of the contractors back in the 1960s refused the job because they found out one section of the bridge, Pier 6, could not be built as projected in the design plans. So when the bridge collapsed in 2007, the south end of the bridge shifted 80 feet to the east, right on the location of Pier 6. The Pier 6 issue, investigators claimed though, was not the reason why the bridge collapsed. Instead, there were some concerns that the black ice prevention system on the bridge surface caused corrosion and weakened steel construction. Still, this scenario too was abandoned as implausible. After thorough research of video showing the collapse of the bridge and project documents and conducting interviews with people engaged in building the bridge, investigators finally discovered the cause of the collapse. It was a design error after all. Each steel truss arch construction consisted of steel girders and steel plates called gusset plates that connect them. The investigation revealed that gusset plates on the I-35 West Bridge were only half an inch thick, twice less than they were supposed to be, and thus unable to support the bridge's weight. Recovered gusset plates after the collapse showed noticeable crackings, clear signs that they were overloaded. Truth be told, back in the 1960s, this size of the gusset plates was within standard limits. The thing was, over time, the road surface increased by an additional two inches of concrete. This increased the static load of the bridge by a massive 20%. What more, at the time of the collapse, maintenance crews were resurfacing the lanes on the bridge. The weight of the construction equipment and a material increased the load on already weakened gusset plates. At one point, the construction gave in under the weight of road surface, construction equipment, material, and vehicles, and simply collapsed. The question arose how no one noticed such a critical design flaw. The truth, however, came to light very quickly. All inspections from 1993 onwards noted significant structural deficiencies. 
The most troublesome were the 2005 and 2006 reports that found severe issues of cracking and fatigue. In 2005, the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge was scored 50 by the bridge inspectors, indicating that the bridge was to be replaced. Minnesota governor did announce that the bridge was projected to be replaced with the new one, but not before 2020. Out of 100,000 bridges with heavy traffic nationwide, only 4% were scored less than 50. The fact clearly spoke of how bad the condition of the bridge in Minneapolis was. The investigation results raised the alarm in the entire United States. Across the country, there were hundreds of bridges similar to the one that collapsed in Minneapolis. The Senate and House of Representatives' opposition were loudest in claims that the traffic infrastructure in the United States was in a dreadful state. The House responded with legislation authorizing $1 billion to reconstruct the weak bridges on the national highway system. However, the Federal Highway Administration claimed that the project needed at least $55 billion, an amount of money their government was reluctant to spend. Unfortunately, the lesson of the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge collapse was not learned. Cutting finances on maintenance of the traffic infrastructure could lead only to disasters. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe. See you next time.